Hello. Yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation. And let's start now. Just a moment. So, can you see it? I think it's. Yes, we can. Okay. So thank you very much for the invitation and giving me this uh, great opportunity to talk about the German healthcare system and uh, the screening concept of cervical cancer in Germany and to share with you our experience mm. with co-testing, uh, i.e. using in the routine screening from our uh, lab. My name is Ariola Jaya. I am an obstetric gynecologist and working as a specialization of, of a physician for cytology 15 years at Sutomol. Um, Sutomol is a, a very large private lab for routine diagnostic certified in Germany. And the last year we have approximately 650,000 pap smears and uh, we have also HPV tests. We are eight doctors. In Germany it's possible the gynecologist working as cytologist we have one medical specialist for laboratory, one pathologist, and we have 27 cytotechnicians. Um, in uh, our laboratory use, uh, used to work with the modern test. In 1996, we started with routine use of HPV high-risk testing as triaging, and the time uh, was, hybrid, uh, was um, uh, hybrid capture two, and now we are using COBAS. In 2000, we are the first lab in Germany working with liquid base and introduced thin prep. In 2007, we started with routine use of image computer assistance. 2010, we started with routine use as triaging P60, Chi67. Uh, in the 2020, uh, 2020, it was a big change of the screen concept in Germany. The co-testing in patient older than 35 uh, was introduced and we are a big lab and offering that in thin prep and HPV test. And approximately 90% of the gynecologists are using thin prep vials to do the co testing. In the small facilities in Germany, co testing will be done with conventional cytology. In uh, 2021, we started the uh, evaluation study of the Genius Digital Diagnostic System. And in the 2020-23, we started with uh, uh, using in the routine, and now we have more than uh, 600,000 cases, a very large experience with um, Genius. Um, let's talk about healthcare in Germany. Healthcare in Germany, uh, if you are seeing the first social system of insurance was introduced in 1883 by Otto Bismarck, and that was the milestone of the German healthcare system. In Germany, we have a federal system. That means the responsibilities are divided according to the principle of subsidiarity. First, the municipalities are responsible for the local residents, and then the states, we have 16 states. It's important to know that in Germany, the healthcare system is a regional semi-independent administration of physician affairs. In the last year, there were um, 96 public sickness funds and 42 private insurances. And the five big basic principles of the healthcare in Germany are the mandatory insurance. That means everyone registered or resident in Germany is required to take out health insurance. We have a big statutory health insurance or the private health insurance if the income is more than 5,000 euro per month. All the system is financed by contributions. That means in the statutory health insurance, all the contributions are based on salary, approximately 14.6% of salary, of which the employer pays half. In a private uh, health insurance, this contribution is individually, the state pays for those receiving unemployment or social security benefits. Another very important uh, in principle is solidarity. All of those with uh, statutory health insurance bear the cost for the treatment of individual members who earns more pays higher contributions. The healthy one pays 
for the sick ones, the rich for the poor, singles for families, and in sickness you receive the full salary for six weeks, and all members receive the same level of services. There is no direct payment by patients. The insured are entitled to free treatment, apart from any individual extra charges defined by law. Um, we have a very, um, very important self-administration um, uh, principle. Private and public providers operate side by side. They regulate their inter interrelationships themselves and the state defines the framework for medical care and its responsibility. And the supreme decision-making body is the GBA or the Federal Joint Committee. This GBA is important, uh, established in uh, 2004, uh, 2004, sorry. <laughs> and um, there are three impartial members in the GBA, in the, this joint committee. We have five representatives from statutory health insurance providers, KGV Spitzenverband, and uh, five care providers representative. Uh, this one is the German Hospital Federation. It has said KPV is important because this is the National Association of Statutory Health Insurance Physicians. KZPV is for dentists. And uh, all these care providers are entitled to vote only issues affecting their area of expertise. And the patient representatives here are entitled to take part in discussions and submit petitions, but not to vote. GBA is a legal entity under public law with a wide ranging regulatory powers, especially for the assessment of new methods of medical examination and treatment is giving us the laws. In theory, this standardized procedure based on evidence-based medicine. In practice, sometimes we have an intransparent uh, authority without clear disclosure of expert statements and names. And there are a lot of controversies between GBA and scientific societies and clinicians. Um, <clears throat> just a moment. So the German healthcare, I told, as I mentioned before, we have the big group of statutory insured and the private insured. Um, the big one, 90% was the, I am talking now not about private insurance by, because here it's possible using the test without having the limitations. As a physician, you can recommend HPV or what do you think is necessary? I am talking now about statutory insured uh, patient. Um, in 2023, uh, in the cervical cancer screening in Germany, let's see some data. Uh, it was uh, the cytology labs were about 445 and pathologies, cytologies in 2023 are 742. The number of cyto labs and physician with authorization, because you need to do um, to have a license for the cy cytology, is continuously decreasing. Uh, Ten years before, we had more than thousand cyto labs, maybe, and a lot of pathology cytologies. And the majority of the green cytology were done in small facilities in 2019. Eighty percent of the labs and approximately 7% uh, of smears were in the hands of gynecologists. But yet after 2020, we have a concentration process. Um, all these results from the statutory health insurance patient, uh, this uh, evaluation of uh, our finding in cytology, can you see in the GIFRA, this is an open access and it's very, um, the all for all the women in Germany from Ulyshek is uh, recent uh, published. And the 2090, we had 70,609,000 pap smears from uh, 15,608,000 women. And the most of them, maybe 100% were done in the conventional uh, pap, pap and the NIM rate was 97.5%. And only 2.5% abnormal pups uh, are there. And from that, only 0.9, maximum 1% is high cell and cancer in the cytology. Let's see now the age specific incidence rates uh, from the cervical cancer in Germany. The highest incidence is here, occur between 35 and 44. 
but if you are seeing in the older population, we have a higher incidence of cervical cancer. That's where in Germany, we are starting with screening at uh, age 20, and there is no upper limitation for screening in the older population. Uh, what's about uh, incidence rate and mortality? We have no recent data. This is in 2017 and predicted was 8.1 women uh, per 100,000 women, the incidence rate and the mortality is remaining the same, 2.5 per 100,000 women. Um, the cervical cancer screening prior 2020 was organized like this, that every woman starting at age 20 is going annually to the gynecologist and getting a pap smear. In this group was not allowed prior 2020 using liquid base, only conventional cytology was um, allowed. The system was an opportunistic screening, but strict equality and data control from this CAFAO. We have a yearly part participation rate, uh, of course, no estimate, 60% within three years up to 80%. Uh, after, since 2020, for the young population, 20 year old, still 34, is remaining the same procedure. They are coming every year to gynecologists and getting a pap smear. Liquid base is now allowed in this group. And in the older population, 35 older, they are receiving concomitantly an HPV test. And in our lab, we are doing the HPV first and then the pap. If both of tests are negative, the patient are coming every three years. If one of the tests is positive, we have an algorithm and they're going to do a colposcopy. Uh, and I told you we offering are offering the co-testing in ThinPrep. All of this period has an co-testing has an evaluation period of six years, and that is necessary to co collect the data in a national level. Um, the organized screening uh, is now met with an invitation every five years but uh, the yearly participation rate is remaining the same. If you are seeing here, we have this algorithm and there is a mandatory algorithm for uh, all the patients older than 35. If you are seeing HPV negative ASCOS will be ignored, HPV negative NIL will be, uh, all this group are coming back after three years. The HPV positive ASCOS low seal or Carcinoma is indifferent of HPV positive or negative are going immediately to colposcopy. And the other big group, HPV positive MILM or HPV negative low seal, are coming again after one year. And if remain one of the test positive are going to colposcopy. Uh, what's about the colposcopy group in Germany? The creepers and quads, they are, are uh, as a target lesion in colposcopy, they are definitely the SYN3+, plus. only SYN3 and carcinoma will be therapied and will be treated. SYN1, sorry, SYN1 and C2, uh, they are coming again after six months, repeating a co-test in 12 months, again cytology, and this is a never ending story for this group. Um, let's see uh, now two systems, the Testa system and the uh, München nomenclature system. Because you have to know, we have in München nomenclature this 2A, that means it's nil, but A anamnestic means maybe patient had a cervical carcinoma or uh, conization before. That's why we are using this 2A. Or if we have an HPV positive nil situation in our laboratory, we are using this diagnostic. Uh, the difference in Germany was, uh, in Germany, the target lesion is SYN3 because before this biopsy and colposcopy in the, this group four was uh, made uh, immediately conization. And that's why in Germany, the difference is uh, between SYN2 and SYN3, not like in Bethesda, low SIL and high SIL. And this is an important uh, change in both of systems. And please memorize this ASCUS, this is this, 2P in our diagnosis. Um, München nomenclature 3 is very easy to understand. One is normal, two are reactive or uh, changes, three means dis dysplasia, four means adenocarcinoma in situ or uh, SYN3, and five is um, a cancer. 
This P means platinum epithel or squamous lesion, G is glandular, and E is endometrial, X is other. It's a little emanic. So I told you that Kafao, this is very important because every laboratory has a um, contract with this Kafao, with this uh, association of statutory health insurance physician, regional one, and it's mandatory for every labor to do an annual statistic like this on the right. And this statistic will be transmitted anonymously to the National Association of Statutory Health Insurance, KBV. And this KBV and our KV are doing, giving back a benchmark reports and giving us the quality criterion how to work in cytology. In this is very complicated, this statistic. Uh, here on the top, you can see the PAP group. Here, for example, there are in cytology uh, suspicion for SYN3, and here you have the um, results, histology results, maybe colonization at that time. You can see the quality of cytology. And uh, I told you it was an opportunistic screening, but uh, strictly quality and data control. And the benchmark was that it's not allowed to have more ASCUS than low seal or equal. And nil is not allowed uh, to have abnormal PAPs more than 5%. So this group, this 2P, we have to keep it very low. And you understand it's very difficult every day to ask to P or not to be. Let's see about PAP smear, success and limits. This is a 90 year old test with a remarkable success of story. For me, it's the most important cancer screening test. Thanks PAP smearing. Are we here with a significant reduction of cervical cancer mortality? But um, we have no technical improvements since introduction. And the, the limits of the test are uh, reached 50% 50, 50 of the cancer in patient had a five in the last five years in normal conventional smear. The sensitivity of conventional cytology for SYN2 and 3 is 51%. And um, of course, we can improve the, in the modern science the, the conventional cytology. Let's talk about computer assistance in cytology. The beginnings goes back to 50s and 60s in that time due to the complexity of the cervix and insufficient power of computer was no success. And liquid base was a byproduct development. It was an, not the, the the target to deliver liquid base, but it was necessary let in computer to work the cells. Um, in the 1995 and 99, we have the first uh, screening machines, the focal points, for example. In 2003, we have the FinPEP imaging system, all with the APA improvement. And in 2021, finally, we have a uh, computer and artificial intelligence uh, helping us for screening. Let's see shortly the FinPAP imaging system because we are using this in a routine. It's a computer assisted for screening only for FinPAP specimens. Or this system is doing a densometric nuclear analysis with 22 most suspicious focus of you are selected for screening. Uh, in our laboratory, we are going to do full screen manually. We have an FDA approvement and worldwide there are more than 1000 system is the standard in cytology. Uh, the imager utilizes optical algorithms to select cells like our, our uh, normally, like we do. Abnormal cells have greater darker nuclei, and uh, therefore the algorithm looks for the greatest darkest objects. They do not pay attention to overlapping nuclei, which also appear great on dark. And in contrast, they look for nuclei in groups, uh, which correspond to glandular layer or endocervical cells. And before we, um, wo we work in the routine uh, with the new technique, we um, are going to do a study before uh, to validate the technique. Ryan's our study was studying uh, 21,000 women. And in our routine, we saw, it was the first uh, contact with the FinPAP imager group, that really in the routine in this group, the finding for SYN3 in carcinoma was four times more than in the conventional cytology. And it's very important for us because we need this experience to, to convince ourselves that the, this technique is good. 
And this technique is successful. We are work, still working with imaging system. And you can, you can ask me why it's now necessary using the digitalization and artificial intelligence in cytology. Well, uh, as I mentioned before, we have an increasing shortage of cytotechnician pathology cytologists. Cytology has a higher inter and intra-observer variability. Now in Germany is coming the generation of uh, women with HPV vaccination and the clinically relevant precursors of cervical carcinoma become uh, significantly rarer. That means screening becomes more monotonous and experience with pathologic findings decreases. That means the traditional screening will be more difficult and I hope that cytology remain and will be important for HPV disease. Of course, we need an improvement of sensitivity and specificity in uh, cytology and assessment by external um, would be possible. Let's see the components of Genius uh, Digital Diagnostic. We have a very performed digital imager only for thin prep um, uh, smears. We have a cervical algorithm and artificial intelligence. We have an image management server and a very performed uh, monitor review station. The challenge in cytology is that uh, to these three dimensional cell groups located between the cover slip and glass slide in different depths, deep, they are all three dimensional to bring them in a two dimensional, very clearly picture. And thanks to this imager, is that possible? And thanks artificial intelligence because they are uh, scanning all this in 13, 14 uh, different divs. And we have a very clear uh, picture uh, from artificial intelligence and algorithm organized by rows. If you are seeing here in the first row, we are expecting to see the superficial cells, uh, enlarged nuclei and chrysalocytes, so ascus and low seal uh, lesions. In the second row, we are expecting to see the small cells, metaplasia, parabasal cells, but high seals also. In the third row, we have distorted cells and traditional item for one and two. Of course, if you need more information, you can click and double the pictures, the number of pictures. In the first row, we uh, expect is expecting to see glandular cells or other clusters. And in the fifth row, we can see infections as mycosis, trichomonas. And if there is no abnormality there, all of this um, in the gallery, you can see on normal cells. Okay, um, I told you, as I mentioned before, we uh, study uh, with a pseudomol. We, using that in a routine, we wanted to make a study and um, here we have a picture from Sutomol. This is our lab. And here you can see our four uh, cytotechnicians uh, doing practicing with monitors with the digital uh, cytology. The validation study was made in 2000 cases. Six, in six uh, cases was not possible doing the scanning. Um, and now we have an experience in 600,000 cases. Um, um, our study design was a retrospective blinded review of thin prep slides pre-analyzed with imaging system. And we wanted to see the accordance of the pub groups with a genius digital diagnostic system. And it was important for us to see the non-inferiority of the genius digital diagnosis versus thin prep imaging. Of course, screening time per slides. In, uh, within two months was possible to examine all the cases and in uh, all low seal and high seal cases, there was after six month uh, histology results, most of them was a biopsy, biopsy in uh, there. Um, here on the chart, you can see the results. On the right is we have genius diagnostic uh, system finding and on the left, thin prep imaging system. Uh, this was made in Bethesda because the first results were made in a German nomenclature and the difference between one great discrepancy or major discrepancy is different. Uh, if you are seeing in the green area, we have a perfect match between two systems and, and there's 86%. That's mean in the nil area, we have both 1,183 cases and in the high seal, 238. 
But if you are seeing in this case, for example, we have eight high seals with the genius uh, diagnostic and eight uh, nil with nil, uh, eight nil with the FIMPAP imaging system. Um, if we are doing the concrete dance analysis within cytology categories and considering the histology results, the accuracy of the genius diagnostic was 90%. That means in these eight cases, five biopsies were with an high seal, confirmed the high seal, but three biopsies, uh, there was no sin lesion, only inflammation. We uh, ex uh, expected six till eight months and we do a retrospective review of this, those cases and follow up. And we saw that HPV remained positive and PAP was not abnormal in those cases. And after six, eight months, there was a colonization and the SYN3 lesion in glandular area confirmed our genius uh, diagnostic high seal. That means the accuracy of the genius screening go grows to 97%. Um, all this study uh, were published uh, the last year at the cancer cytopathology. But uh, for us it was very important the non-inferiority assessment for all the cut of values, the results of this quality assurance evaluation confirmed that genius technology is not inferior to the FinPEP imaging system. Furthermore, we have a significantly more slides with higher severity. For the SH, we have 20.6% uh, screened with genius versus 70.5% with imaging. In the high seal group, we have 80% finding with genius and versus 30%, 13% uh, in uh, finding with the imaging system. And low seal at ASCUS, the cases were comparable between the two technologies. Okay. Um, Let's see now what's about, uh, because this is only a study in 2000 cases, what's happened in our routine using. In the 2021, it was possible to separate in the co-testing group, both system, FinPEP and Genius. And uh, if you are seeing here, the dark blue shows the finding with FinPEP imaging system. And with the light blue, we have the Genius uh, finding. We have a little bit more ASCUS. We have more low seal and high seal. That means we are more sensitive at a little bit overcalling with genius, maybe too sensitive, but we are still remaining in our quality criterion. We are not uh, going more than, we don't have more than 5% abnormal PAPs in our population. And the ASCUS group is lower than low seal groups. Group. Let's see the this uh, two groups versus conventional cytology in the women older than 35, two years before. And if you are seeing in the conventional cytologies, this one, we are finding more ASCUS, 2%, and the finding for low seal and high seal, they are lower than FinPEP imaging and Genius. And in this, on this chart, on this graphic, is clear, and the Genius group, is the quality of the screening is remaining. We have a very good quality of the screening. We have a, a distinct mesh between low seal and high seal is very clear. We have not more than 5% abnormal finding. And please don't forget our dilemma, ASCUS group is lower than low seal. So that is for us very important to see that um, our quality of screening in the genius is remain very high and we can screen uh, quickly. Let's see some cases uh, from the routine. Uh, here we have a 37 year old women, HPV 18, COBAS positive, and our diagnosis was an, um, in German VRG and it was an adenocarcinoma in situ. Uh, I told you that the problem in the genius are these crowded uh, cells, and uh, sometimes you have you need to 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 have this uh, micro uh, uh, meter tube to do the focus. But uh, if you have enough experience and enough training, uh, you can recognize the features of the adenocarcinoma inside. 
this uh, hyperchromasia, you can see the, uh, the abnormality of the chromatin, uh, the crowding groups of the cells, and uh, is this, the feathering is clearly, and the diagnosis is uh, possible with the genus also. In the other cases is this one, we have a 44 year old uh, woman, HPV negative, uh, this patient has the last 10 years an intrauterine device in Mirena. And uh, I think well, the last uh, pop was four or five years. Uh, if you are seeing the number of the uh, cells screened are very slow. We have only 3,900 cells. <clears throat> but And if you are seeing here, a lot of bleed and this tumor diathesis maybe. And if you are click on these cells, you can see uh, necrosis or um, dyscariosis, or in this group we have in high cell group, SYN3 cells or more. And very important is to see these spindle cells. And for us, it was clear the diagnosis was a uh, squamous cell carcinoma in cytology. And if you are clicking on the uh, top, you can see other high cell cells or this we have all the, you can mark, the cytotechnicians can uh, click the mark in this, um, this area, these pictures, and we have knocked uh, cells, it's typical in thin prep for high cell. And the uh, histological, uh, it was in squamous cell carcinoma with micro, um, micro invasion. Let's see some normal uh, cases. We have here Nilm, 35 year old, HPV negative, the diagnosis is very easily to make it or here in this case, young women, we have Neil HPV negative here also. The, those cases are very easily to screen. So as a conclusion, we uh, our data indicate the higher sensitivity of the genius digital diagnostic technology to distinguish higher grades from lower grades, up to 50% shorter working time, Evaluation of slides by several experts in different cases worldwide is possible. Of course, extended further studies are reasonable. Okay, oh, just a moment, please. Thank you. So, uh, um, I told you uh, that we are bringing now our um, code testing data from the first two years in the uh, 2020, we published a paper in the GIPFA and it's open access. You can read it. That are all our findings in the cytology in about 400,000 uh, cases. They are all co testing women older than 35. It was very, for us, we wanted to see the HPV positive rate, and on average, it was 6.4%. But if you are seeing in the younger group of population, because in Germany, we have some uh, facilities, some medical center with younger population. They do have, of course, a higher HPV positivity, 9.6%. And in the older population, the HPV 3.2% is remaining high, higher. But um, what's about, uh, we have about 400,000 uh, cases, and that's mean 25,365 are HPV negative. But almost 60% of this HPV positive were nil, and only 42% were ASCUS plus. So now in the cytology, if you are seeing here, we have the distribution of our uh, finding in the code testing group. Um, there is a little bit discrepancy because in the code testing in this group, we have a small percentage of conventional cytology. On the right, uh, we have our finding 3% were abnormal pub, but it was very interesting to see that we have 1,700 HPV negative from all these abnormal pubs. And if you are seeing the distribution of them, it is that in the ASCUS or low seal group, uh, the HPV negative was higher in the SYN3 and carcinoma group about 8% in cytology. And if you are seeing um, in cytology, the SYN3 and carcinoma, they are only 0.7% of the old population. Because it's important to see the relation, we are going to treat only SYN3 and carcinoma. That means in 400,000 women, 
we are expecting to find lesions that are treating only in 0.7% of the population. Here we have on the chart our finding in 2,851 uh, histology results. Uh, now we are receiving more histology that is still June 23, but it's a little uh, complicated to publish them. Maybe in the next two, three years, uh, two, three months, sorry, uh, we'll publish our histology finding in GEPFRA. Uh, I told you that in Germany, uh, in colposcopy, if they, they, they find a SIN1 or SIN2 or no SIN, they are not going to treat this patient. They are remaining in the screening. We are going to treat only SIN3 plus lesions. And it was interesting to see that uh, that's you know, only to remember, this is our <clears throat> target therapy, only SIN3. That means <clears throat> only this thousand lesion, they are SIN3 and carcinoma, from 400,000 patients are going to be treated. And in our finding in the primary screening co-testing, we can see that 32% of the finding are the SIN3, but 31% are SIN0, 20% SIN1, and 30% are SIN2. And we are seeing, in, uh, I don't know why, but in all this group, the HPV negative rate is remain almost 6%. We have 6% HPV negative in the SIN3 plus and in the SIN01 and 2. And that's why I am uh, calling that for a better memorize the rule of the six. In our population, we have on average 6.4% uh, HPV positivity. And in our histologies, we, have, we are concentrating our biopsies in this positive group, but we have 6% HPV negative in both of lesions in three in carcinoma and no sin, sin one and sin two. Um, if you are, if we are going to see in, on this chart, the biopsy, we have 45% of this intervention were biopsies and the rest conization and hysterectomia. Uh, in the conization and hysterectomy, 70% or 76% are sin three in carcinoma. So we are going to treat the uh, sick persons or good, but the problem is here. And now we have some more histology and the number of the biopsies having no SIN or SIN12 is growing to 95%. And that's the problem. This group is for me overdiagnosed and in the SIN2 situation is undertreated. And that's the problem because these women are remaining in screening and coming again, again, and this, uh, the number of inutile biopsies is too high. This is my opinion. And uh, we have an, uh, in bicytomol, all this time we have an efficient screening model. And this is, uh, if you are thinking for the clinical uh, physician, it's important to know what kind of lesion is that. Is, uh, and if you are thinking like a traffic light, the red lesions, they are this one. This is important you have to go to treat them. And the green one are HPV negative, they are coming after three years. But the most of these lesions are between two. We have um, now with the code testing, we have HPV positive persisting neum, or we have HPV negative low silicon ascus. And there is um, no, no reason to send them immediately to colposcopy. We can repeat them after six months. It's not happening anything. The percentile of the SIN3 or carcinoma is maybe 0.5% uh, from all of them. We are talking about 500 or 1,000 cases. And our experience showed that we screened with the conventional cytology. And after six months, if you are going to improve your cytology, for example, liquid-based or digital or computer-assisted, or if you are going to do first an, um, a treatment of the inflammation or estrogenizing in atrophia, and using concomitantly as a dysplasia marker, the P60K67, and if it's positive, going to treat them. We have a little bit experience with methylation. So this is a very big group, 6.14%, and there are 24,000 uh, women in our screen population, and there is no reason to send them immediately to biopsy. We can control them every six months, 12 months of cytology, and to find the right moment 
to send them to colposcopy because if you are sending the women too early to biopsy, maybe uh, after two or three years, they uh, were not uh, going to do it anymore, the biopsy. That is a little bit too early seven. And uh, in all this group, we have only about 300 uh, cases, HPV invalid or uh, PAP0 was not possible to study. So as a conclusion, in um, 400,000 women older than 35, screened with code testing, thin prep and HPV test in 2020 and 21, we can say that code testing combines the higher sensitivity of HPV test with the higher specificity of cytology. For us in the laboratory, is code testing very good because um, the cytotechnicians are paying attention, for example, to HPV 16 or 18, we have the internal control. So I find the code testing personally, uh, for me, is the code testing very good. But the biopsies are less sensitive and specific as code testing. And in the biopsy group, we have an increase of lower grade histological findings. And that's why I'm talking, we can reduce the biopsies if you, you improve the cytology control after six months or doing other tests, you can improve and you can, do, uh, you can avoid the unnecessary biopsies. And if you are going to have only an HPV approach in primary prevention, maybe would miss six till 8% of HPV negative syn3 and carcinoma. And now in the fourth year of code testing, we are observing that the number of HPV negative uh, syn2 and syn3 is growing because in the first two years, we concentrate our diagnosing in the HPV positive group. But now uh, this ASCUS HPV negative or LPC HPV negative are coming after four or five years. And that's why I think the interval carcinoma in the future will be more with HPV high risk negative. So um, another is very important for our, us and I, our <clears throat> cytotechnician because they were afraid uh, of uh, artificial intelligence and digitalization to, of losing their jobs. But our experience shows that we cannot replace the cytotechnicians with artificial intelligence in the monitor. This monitor and all this just improves the skills. They are also a little bit a teaching effect for, our, for the young cytotechnicians. And uh, the art of interpretation remain a human characteristic. The diagnosis will be made by us and not by the computer or the artificial intelligence. So uh, many thanks for your attention. And that was, if you have some question, I can answer them. Yeah, that was great, Ariola. Uh, that was oh. an excellent presentation. It, and it's, it was nice to hear about your experience. Um, I just have a, that is a one question from Sue. Mm -hmm. uh, She's asking that why is there a 5% limit chosen? Uh, it's a poor, very good question. We don't know that. <laughs> yeah. The benchmark for the CAFO mm. is for us a black box. Uh, but, you know, I think in Germany, it was normally this uh, every year a conventional cytology. And they wanted to, to keep it uh, small with the ASCUS. That of it is not is not in ev repeating every year and pop you have the is safety, so please uh, give only high seals or the lesions you ne uh, needed to treat and keep it small. And that's I think that is the idea behind. But uh, this you know this uh, benchmark is not made uh, from us. We don't know why. I told you this institution are doing <laughs> what they think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but we have a well screened uh, population in Germany because the women are coming to doctor every year, sometimes mm. every six months. Every six okay. months, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, mm -hmm. There's another question uh, saying, asking about how many genius cases do oh, your question. cytotechnologist or the pathologist review? Um, Okay, day. everybody is allowed uh, to do the conventional cytology IT, uh, 80 per day. But if you are going to use the computer assistance, you can see doubled 
160 or 140. And we uh, in our lab remain to this number. So if you want to see more, it's allowed, you can do it, but it's not, uh, if you have enough time, you can reduce your ASCUS and your AGC number. <laughs> so that you have enough time, but uh, till now, remaining 80 if you screen conventional and 140 if you are screening with uh, computers or genius. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, the other question is, how often do the screeners take breaks between the screen, between those 80 to 160 cases you know, per day? This is individually in our lab. If you need some breaks, we have uh, some people, they don't need breaks. They can screen with the screen. It is a concentration. This is an, uh, um, how to say it, very individual. Uh, in Germany, we have rules after uh, four hours, you have to have a break of 30 minutes for all people. But sometimes, you know, you can go to drink a coffee and it's very easily with Genius because we have in a big uh, room, Genius, you can drink coffee. Five or six cytotechnician are doing small talks and seeing uh, the cases and discussing the ca cases. And that's why I think the Genius is very well as a teaching effect. <laughs> and it's very easy. You can take breaks if you want more or less, it's important to see your, your pensum, your uh, cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another question put up is, do the screeners look anywhere else on the case in addition to the tiles uh, yes, selected? If, yes, of course. If you, uh, if you want, you can screen it all in the monitors. You have full screen and you can screen it. Or if you want, you uh, a lot of cytotechnicians and uh, takes the smears and uh, screen them after the under the microscope again. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have some bleeding smears or if you have atrophia or inflammation, they choose this uh, smears and uh, screen again under the microscope. Yes, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, rather than a question, uh, there is a comment saying that. Uh, the, uh, it, the data looks quite similar to PAPNAT. Oh, well, maybe, I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, and there's one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, what QC step do you do on the genius slides uh, for, the, uh, for the negative ones? Um, so for example, if the cytotechnicians thinks is a clear nil, it's not necessary to do another step. There's clicking, going to the computer, uh, doing a report is very easily, and is allowed to do the nil uh, by herself, giving it out as a nil. It's not necessary that a doctor uh, see it again. In uh, Germany, we as uh, physicians are uh, screening only the ASCUS or the abnormal PAPs or the persistent of HPV positivity NILMS. And the rest, uh, the cytotechnicians are doing the diagnosis by themselves, is allowed. Mm -hmm. Diagnose it. Yeah. Yes, um, only one screener looks at NIL, but if you are not um, very sure, we have, for example, with the colleagues in the room, uh, you can. Uh, do the four uh, uh, two persons uh, signature is allowed, or if you are not such sure, you can uh, come to physicians or send it uh, to see again. But usually, one person can give a nil case out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for addressing that. Uh, uh, there's another question: uh, Has the cell count affected? Uh, sorry, has the cell count affected the uh, inadequate rate? Uh, um, actually not, but uh, in the genius, if you think that this uh, insufficient uh, cells account is pink, that means oh, you may in the genius system, uh, the machines are telling us something is not okay because the number of the cells is. But do you know in the routine we have a lot of pink cases and uh, we can screen them as well. And we have the experience in the atrophia or the, some cases, uh, the genius show, uh, shows us the pathologically um, cells. Yes, we screen them. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. Oh yeah, that's a nice, <laughs> a great question for today's uh, 
uh, time. Uh, do all the staff work from the laboratory or uh, do they report remotely? Uh, I don't understand the staff. Uh, all the staff is uh, working at the laboratory. Uh, do they report anything from home? No, no, because no. Uh, um, yeah, this discussion is very, it's possible to do it, but you know, these monitors are very expensive. And in Germany, you need this uh, data transfer and you have this uh, to be secure and a lot of uh, bureaucracy and laws. That's why we are not doing that. Possible is, is a lot of discussion in laboratory, but uh, you have to come here to screen. <laughs> <laughs> in theory, it's possible, you know, and first of yeah. that was possible, but this uh, we have to work online, all the data and the connection. And you have to work safe. It's very important in Germany, the safety of your patient and your data. Mm -hmm. And that's why that it's not possible to, yeah. <laughs> to work from home. Hopefully sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's one more question. What percentage of German women uh, attend, uh, have attended the screening and what's the uptake rate for the screening? Uh, I showed it at the beginning that uh, every woman is coming about 60% every year. And in uh, three years, it's going up to 80% of the women. That's why I told you the, the population in Germany is very well screened population. And uh, we are seeing now, for example, a lot of women coming from Ukraine and the finding of cervical cancer in this population is higher. But in Germany, it's very rarely to find a cancer or sometimes there are old women coming from land haven't uh, seen a doctor in the last 10 years, but in the most young people, they're coming. About mm -hmm. uh, 60% within three years, 80% of population coming to, to do a screening, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ariola. Um, yeah, I don't see any more questions uh, on the chat group. Uh, maybe um, can you tell me how there is in in a, in your country, in England, how is the screening organized? Do you have primary HPV? Do you know that? Uh, I do not do these uh, gynecytology, uh, but it is primary HPV. Mm -hmm. And what's happened then? Biopsies in the clinical or where? If the HPV is positive? Uh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I would not be the right person to answer okay. your question. No um, yeah, uh, there are a couple more. Um, yes, yeah, uh, so Sue has answered your question saying that if HPV is positive, then they would look at the cytology uh, slides. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite similar what to what uh, you said. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple more questions. Yes. Um, um, do you review the glass slides when the tiles have crowded groups, which are difficult to see? Yes, uh, I told you if the cytotechnicians, we have a uh, cytotechnicians are very experienced and they think that uh, you must review that, of course we, are, we can review it. If the cytotechnicians say, yeah, okay, is everything okay? It's not necessary. Yes, I do understand that the HPV rate is uh, higher in the UK, and I know uh, only in our lab is uh, about 6%, but we have a lot of old women in Germany coming to screening also. That's why, because the women are after 15, 16, are coming every six months in Germany. I don't know, they are very educated. <laughs> That's why we have maybe not such a young group of uh, women, and the population is well screened. That's why we have uh, only 6% HPV positivity. And before that, it was uh, annually in pap screen. That's mean the population, the high CS and carcinoma were treated. That's why we have not so much HPV positivity. But I know in uh, Europe, a lot of other countries, they have a higher HPV rate, I know. Yeah, and... Uh... And why that is, I don't know, but I, I told, I think because uh, there are more young women going to do the screening than in Germany, and that's why the HPV rate is uh, higher, maybe, I don't know, or the interval of the screening is longer, I think, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
just a couple more questions sorry <laughs> what was platform cobus uh, uh, hpv mm-hmm. yeah and so, um, and uh, well, percentage of human, uh, hpv is very difficult because in germany the policy is different in uh, in hessen in frankfurt they are not such more there are about 14 percent uh, hpv uh, vaccinated women uh, I don't have the data because uh, the vaccination occur not in, at the gynecologist, it's according to the um, pediatric uh, uh, facilities that way, but there are not so much vaccinated women in the Frankfurt in Hessen, about uh, 40%. Mm-hmm. Could it be that in two HPV is going to Yeah, that's... <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's a comment from Alison saying that maybe the HPV screening, uh, since you can do the HPV screening for all population rather than only after 30 years high. plus. Yeah, that's where it's yeah. too high. Yeah, exactly. But mm-hmm. in Germany, the, we have all this discussion. The problem was uh, it was too early. 25 is too young or 30 is too young. And of course, HPV uh, positivity is higher. Yes, of course. Mm. Sorry, because I don't know the background of the screening in the U- United Kingdom to uh, to answer why the Germany is like this and there is not like this. But yes, yes, that is mm-hmm. the very young population, of course. Yeah. 25 years, yeah. And uh, in England, you are working with ThinkPrep, I think, only. Or conventional to a thin prep. Only thin prep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. Ah, <laughs> um, oh, of course. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I do not see any more questions now. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. And for the HPV testing, Claire has said that. They uh, use uh, yeah, for COBAS and hemologic uh, testing. laboratory, exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. doing the same. And what about, do we have uh, cases of HPV negative cancer? Or because now we are going to see more HPV negative cancer and synthesis. How it, it is the situation in England? Uh-huh. I'll, have, I'll have to pass it to the audience. Okay. Okay. Uh, who can answer your question uh, in case if anyone can help mm-hmm. us okay uh, yeah so sue even says that in, even in scotland there are a few hpv negative cancers mm-hmm. yes yes mm-hmm. um, yeah I don't know. In, in Germany, in our lab, this remains six percent from SYN3 and carcinoma. The most of them carcinoma or adenocarcinoma. I don't know, but in the routine, you don't know if it is an adenocarcinoma of the endometrium or is a adenocarcinoma of the cervix. It is an neg- HPV negative adenocarcinoma. It's an HPV negative cancer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's uh, yeah. very. Uh, thank you for the information. For thank- me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll come to the ending of this session now. Thank you so much, Ariola, for your great presentation and sharing your experience. And thank you to everyone attending the webinar today. Uh, we really appreciate your participation and, hope, you and hoping that this session, uh, you may have found it useful. Yes, Thanks. informative for me too. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, yes.